Learning any tool or technology starts with knowing its architecture and terminology. It could be any design or it could be any technology in the world. We must first understand the terminologies used in it and also the underlying architecture. Sometimes these architectures are complex, just like the Kubernetes. Kubernetes architecture has several terminologies. There are several components that work with each other to accomplish a common goal. In this lesson, let's learn and understand the nitty gritties of the Kubernetes architecture. Essentially, the Kubernetes is also called as K8. The number 8 represents the 8 characters between K and S. Every Kubernetes cluster has at least one master node and also has certain worker nodes. To break down things and to make it simple, let's just assume that the master node is like a class teacher and the worker node are like students. The entire application design, let's call it as a school. I'm just using these terms like class teacher, students and school to make things simpler. The class teacher coordinates the activities with the students and makes them work so that they accomplish a goal or maybe pass an exam. Kubernetes architecture works just like that. In this example, we have one master node and three worker nodes. But in enterprise environments, it can scale up to 5,000 nodes. And there can be multiple master nodes as well for fault tolerance and resilience purposes. The worker nodes can be physical machines or virtual machines. But here, we're talking about Azure-based Kubernetes implementation. And that means they will be virtual machines which are managed by Microsoft. All of these nodes work together to become a cluster. You might have heard of this term called as a pod, a container. Let's understand what it is. A pod is a scheduling unit in Kubernetes. Each pod has one or more containers. There may be multiple containers as well in the same pod. Containers are runtime environments for containerized applications. So you run applications inside the containers. Containers are designed to run microservices. Containers are not designed to run monolithic applications. Let's talk about the master node. The master node is responsible for managing the whole cluster. We use the analogy of a class teacher here, right? So here the master node will ensure that all the nodes are healthy so it performs a health check and configuration of the nodes as well so if one node fails it moves the workloads to other nodes so it's a master who detects the failure kubernetes master is also responsible to expose your applications to the internet manage the load balancer and also scale the nodes always remember that the containers are hosted in the pods and the pods are hosted on the nodes. Let's shift our focus to the Kubernetes master node. The Kubernetes master node is responsible for managing the entire cluster. It coordinates all the activities in the cluster and communicates with the worker nodes. So when you first deploy Kubernetes, it deploys four components along with it. First is the API server. The API server is the entry and exit point for the entire cluster. So if you want to manage, provision, display any Kubernetes object, then it has to go through the Kube API or the Kubernetes API. It is also responsible for exposing all the APIs. We interact with this API server using a command called as kubectl. The second component here is the scheduler. Scheduler is responsible for scheduling pods across multiple nodes. So depending on the information in the config file, the pods would be deployed. So let's say that you mention the CPU as one core, memory as four gigs, the disk size as 20 gigs, and then several other constraints. And then you pass this artifact to the API server. The scheduler will look for the appropriate node that meets this criteria and then deploys it accordingly. The next component is the control manager. Now when this is deployed, there are four other controllers that get connected with it. That's a node controller, replication controller, endpoint controller, service account and token controllers. 
Just keep in mind for now that these controllers are responsible for the health of all nodes. Finally, the etcd or etcd. The etcd is a key value lightweight database. It is a central database to store current cluster state at any point in time. So the components for the Kubernetes can query the etcd to get the current state. So this is considered as a single point of truth for the state of Kubernetes cluster. Now let's shift our focus to the worker node. The worker nodes can be any virtual machine or physical server where containers can be deployed. Every node runs a container runtime such as Docker or Rocket. There are two other Kubernetes components also required to communicate with Kubernetes master. And this is very important. They are called as the kubelet and the kube proxy. The kubelet is a primary node agent that runs on every node. This ensures that the containers in the pods are healthy. And if they are not healthy, then the pods are restarted. And if the issue is with the worker node itself, then the node failure alert is sent and it tries to create the pods on a different node. Let's talk about the kube proxy. Kube proxy is a critical element in the Kubernetes cluster. This is responsible to maintain the network configuration. It essentially maintains a distributed network across all pods, all the containers, all the nodes as well. It also exposes the services to the outside world. Now this is the core component for networking in the Kubernetes cluster. The worker node also hosts pods and containers. As we know, that pod is a scheduling unit and each pod will host one or more containers. It is ideal to host multiple containers in the same pods when they are dependent on each other. If you would like to interact with these containers, you do it via the pod. Containers provide a runtime environment for the applications. You can run processes, services, and other applications inside the container. Containers are designed to run microservices and not for monolithic applications. So the four components inside the worker node are kubelet, kube proxy, the pod, and the container. Besides that, you can have other plugins as well depending on your application requirements. Now, let's combine both the master node architecture and the worker node and take a look at it together. In most cases, the master node does not contain any containers. It just manages the worker nodes. Remember that the Kubernetes supports up to 5,000 worker nodes inside one cluster.